Welcome everyone to a new video. Today we're going to talk about the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X uh, wide running hard, why you should buy it, and most notably how you can fix it in a matter of minutes. So, first of all, I want to rant. So, if people don't want to listen to the rant, even though you probably should, uh, because it's very insightful. I fucking hate reviewers for the most part. Now, reviewers, I, I, I just... Ugh. So, you see, the problem with reviewers are... Uh, it, Generally, just they have no fucking clue what they're talking about. And I fucking hate this so much because they spread misinformation to the point where stuff that shouldn't actually be a thing just happened to be a thing. For instance, the new RTX 2000 series, the RTX 3000 series in notebooks, they are a thing because reviewers. This is the only reason. If the reviewers would actually step up and say shit like, listen, guys, the 3000 series is basically the same as the 2000 series at this point because all it depends on how it will perform is the TDP and nothing else. You can have a 3070 which will outperform a 3080 quite easily. You will have a fucking 3080 super that will absolutely crush a 3080 in a laptop. When you look at desktop, if you compare it to desktop, the 3080 will run equal to a fucking 3060. You're being scammed here, boys. Don't buy a 3080 notebook. Just buy a 3060 notebook because there's literally no point in buying anything f higher than that because you get terrible, terrible, terrible value. There you go. Nobody says it, though. No, everyone's like, oh, look at this. It's such a great performing laptop. Look at the frames. But they don't really do comparison or anything else, which just, you know, flat out pisses me off because it shouldn't be a thing, right? The fact that nobody mentions that the new 3000 series are cut down version of the desktop versions is again fucking infuriating uh so yeah i mean uh. now these two bumbling morons here right creators you want to avoid or or don't buy because it's hot it's the same thing right they're saying okay don't buy because it runs hot but they're not like in case you want to fix the hotness you could just you know go into the bios and change three settings you know which takes you know depending on how fast you can use a keyboard maybe Anywhere between 20 seconds and maybe one minute. Yeah, apparently that is too much to ask of your free time. But again, I mean, this is why I don't like it. Because they spread the information this CPU is just a hot, unbuyable mess. And it's not. Now, thanks to these kind of morons here, obviously the CPU is in stock. So at least that's a good thing. But it's really fucking annoying to see that people otherwise who would have otherwise bought the CPU and would have been really happy would have, you know added in their PC by now if it wasn't for these stupid idiots making some fear mongery out of something that's perfectly fine. So let me explain to you why it runs hot and how to fix. By the way, rant over. So mm, there you go. So how does the die look like? Well, here's the problem, right? There's two problems, actually. Problem one is AMD's PBO, aka, uh, not o aka, but the, generally the, AP, uh, the PBO and of course, how the CPU is actually uh, configured at stock. Now, I do not know why AMD did this, but whatever. And number two is obviously how the hardware is actually, like how the CPU is actually made. Now, if we look at the pictures here, we can see that the Ryzen 5900X and uh, 5950X has one IO die and two CPU dies. So what does this mean? Well, this means you have more surface area to cool down the CPU. This is also why the 5900X actually runs cooler than the 5800X. The 5600X and 5800X actually have only one chiplet here. You can see there's only one CPU die. Now, why is this a problem? Well, you see, the problem is you only need to cool this little chip down. So, why is this a problem? Well, the problem here is you have something called an HIS, which is an internal heat spreader, right? It has job of that thing is to spread the entire heat on the entire um, you know uh, plate which you can see on the cpu when you look at this picture here you can see that um, this entire plate is supposedly there to heat uh, to cool down the cpu now the problem is if your if your um, uh, you know thermal uh, thermal interface right material tim mm -hmm. tim tim <laughs> um, which in this case amd is using some kind of solder uh, is like, like uh, the problem here is it's not conductive enough. And that, that's the main problem. Because of that, the chip, when you have a certain amount of watts, it cannot transfer the, the heat from the chip to the heat spreader anymore. So that's when you become, a, that's when you have a bottleneck. 
And when that happens, the chip will just run way too hot and you cannot really cool it down with anything. It doesn't matter if you have a shitty cooler or a high-end cooler, the result will be the same. The chip will just run hot because of that. And this is where AMD should probably use something more like liquid metal instead of solder because that would, you know, probably make the CPU run even at stock settings. You know, I mean, I wouldn't call it cool, but still, you know, uh, as cool, quote unquote, cool as, the, you know, the 5900X or 5950X. So this is the hardware problem of the issue. Now, a lot of people will you a lot of people now think, well, okay, this is unfixable. So it's not fixable. Well, the thing is it is. Now part 2, and this is the most important part for you guys. Just the hardware part so you understand why the 5800X is actually running hotter than the 5900X despite running at the same TDP, aka the same wattage. Now, look at this 6800X. Now, if you look at the specs, we can see it has 8 cores up to 4.7 gigahertz. It's unlocked, yada yada yada. Um, however, this is the important part. The default TDP is 105 watts. Or rather, I'm going to fix this right now and, and say it should be 500, uh, 105 watts. See, in reality, the actual default TDP of the 5800X is 142. I do not know why this is the case, but it is 142, the same as the 5900X. And because of that, this die will actually run, you know, way too hot. It will actually have to transfer 142 watts of performance to the HIS, which a thermal interface material just cannot do. That kind of sucks, doesn't it? Well, so that means you have to, you know, lower the TDP. That's going to be your solution. I'm also going to somewhat explain how you do that. Um, I don't really have anything to you know, go into BIOS and show you right now. Or actually, I do, but I'm too lazy to do it. And you'll figure out really quickly yourself. So let's just, however, explain um, what what results are. What can you expect is going to happen? Well, because I already did it on mine, so there we go. I have 142 watts. This is the this is the default one. Actually, it's not even the default one. It's the undervolted one, which already gives you a fucking really good idea how stupid this is. So the 142 watts, right, run at all core in Cinebench at four uh, 1.6 gigahertz, roughly. Uh, it will jump 50 plus minus 50 megahertz, uh, megahertz at 1.3, I think it was 375, something like this. 1.375, actually no, it's not, it's not 75, it's actually 50. Uh, that was the lowest, or not even lowest, but it did drop down to uh, 25 really quickly, but this was roughly the average. Now, this is terrible. This is actually fucking just, just, just bad, really bad, really, really, really bad. Because the CPU I've tested myself actually runs at 4.6 gigahertz at 1.2, 15, I believe I put it in, or 25, something like that. It's low 1.2. So this one is giving more than 100 millivolts over what it's supposed to actually have to run 4.6 gigahertz. Which, I mean, it makes sense because I want to get more stability out of it, but it's still ridiculous because this is, mind you, this is undervolted. So I, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it will just pump 1.375 or even 1.4 voltage if you leave it stock. And it'll probably lower this one a little bit as well. So with these, I got at, um, you know, um, I believe ugh, uh, 30 ish minutes, 89 degrees. Yeah, 89 degrees at 70% uh, fan speed on my C uh, CPU fans. Which I replaced with, uh, with Cooler Master ones, which push a ridiculous amount of air. Like, if anyone has a Cooler Master fan from these AIOs and stuff, you know how much air they're pushing through and how loud they are. They're ridiculous. I mean, t in terms of noise level, they're really bad. In terms of actually pushing air through anything, they're... They're probably the best high-performing I've used so far. I mean, they're ridiculous. The amount of air they can push through is just stupid. Now, after putting it on 115 watts, right? It would actually boost to 1.5 gigahertz at all core in Cinebench. And it'll actually run at 1.225 on average. Which, uh, yeah, that's a lot lower. Now... 
what degrees i topped out at you know fine um 78 degrees and it only ran at 40 percent fan speed i would get even better thermals if i'd run it at the same 70 percent so now obviously your question is okay so i'm long uh, i'm running at a lower clock speed and uh Temps are nice, but how much performance do I actually lose? Well, here's the funny thing. In multi-core performance, you lose 2% roughly. I went from a 6.1k score to 5.87-ish, something like that. So you lose roughly 2%. 2 to 3% performance in multi-core. However, I gained in uh lighter low like in single core and lighter loads seven percent performance which is fucking stupid but uh, again here's the thing here's why it's happening because pbo has a really weird way of doing the algorithm is really strange because for some stupid reason the lower it, once you put the what the tdp on 115 or 105 i think that's the range you want to you want to aim at the t the, the pbo curve or the boost behavior of the cpu seems to be more way more optimized to the point where it actually will flat out perform better because that's just what it does and here's right now me just not doing anything right so you can see the uh let's see let's see so it already boosted around five gigahertz uh the two best cores are already a little over five gigahertz the other at four point seven something i mean yeah almost five gigahertz on on these cores when i just don't do anything and the voltage is on average 1.25 note when i had the higher tdp the voltage the average voltage was also ridiculously much higher than this and um for those who already did some pbo uh you know negative curve once you put the tdp down on 115 watts and stuff like that your negative offset will not work anymore because it automatically already uses lower voltage so you'll 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 actually see crashes. Now, before I put down the the um, the wattage, my CPU would run. Let's make a new one here. Uh, don't save. My my CPU would run um, at minus eighteen negative offset without crashing. Once I put in the 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 max uh, wattage of one hundred fifteen, it actually only sustains minus ten now, <laughs> because it just generally lows, it runs at lower voltage. Which is just just. Mm, it's infuriating if you think about it because it's so wasteful with anything above 100 and uh, 105 110 ish uh, watts it's so incredibly wasteful so it just generates heat for little to no performance gains i mean yeah you can say hi hey, again two performance in multi-score but your two performance really equal to 30 more watts i mean come on that's just dumb that's just bad and you got to think about it this way that if you have let's say you have here a graph right it's very important here that you see that you got um, wattage here on the CPU that it actually generates and the Celsius, the degrees, um, the, the degree of, um, actually it should be the other way around, I'm going, that's easier for me. So the more the more uh, wattage the CPU, it'll, it'll, there's a lot of people think that when, when a cooler cools something down, it's like this, right? This is what a lot of people think it's going to be, but actually it's not like this. It, the cooler will not be... The cooler is not actually linearly cooling down the wattage the CPU is producing. It's actually more like this. So lowering the wattage a little bit, depending on the capacity of your cooler, actually has a huge impact on degrees. Because it's exponential. So having 20 watts less will gain a lot better temperatures. And the lower you get, obviously, the, the more it doesn't matter. So this is something you have to keep in mind. Um because this is just what they do now let's just let's just um you know go ahead and uh, show you guys so as you can see here this is uh 74 now important here with the 74 uh, package on this one i did not run cinebench or anything these are very 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 short bursts as you can see on average this one is actually running cooler this is because the ccd1 t die it actually, you know, boosted up really quickly and it's just a little temperature fluctuation. It, it's not really representative of um, how hot it gets. That being said, we can uh, uh, tell you how to actually fix this. So you go into the BIOS, you obviously look at PBO and you got uh, three settings, which I forgot what they're called. Something about wattage, something about amps and another amps. Um, now I can look in Ryzen Master how they're called so I can give it to you. 
exactly because some of you might still not still be new up to it and not entirely sure what I'm talking about. Um, oh yeah, the EDC, the PPT, and the TT, uh, TDC. Now these are my settings, right? I have uh, at the wattage, I have 115 watts. I have at the uh, TDC 100. This is something with ampere, I believe. And this one at 80 amps. So these are my settings. Now, depending on what cooler you have, you might want to change these a little bit because obviously they will change depending on um, what cooler you have right now. Personally, if you have a beefy cooler, I would go for this. This is what I would go for. If you have a if you have stock cooler or something a little smaller, let's say let, let's say you don't have a Noctua, let's say you have 120 mil or 140 mil AIO, or you have let's say a smaller cooler than Noctua DH15 or Scythe Ninja 5 or whatever, right? Then you might want to put it at 105 watts. Uh, put the um, this one to 90 amps and this one to 80 amps. This is this is what I would recommend. For most people, for those who have a little beefier cooler, you can take this one. As I said, it's it's um, you know uh, exponential. This is how you basically fix it. Now your gains, you actually get a little better gain. You'll get a little bit more gain in uh, gaming performance uh, depending on what game you will actually uh, notice it or not. I mean, CS:GO and Valorant, you will probably notice the the seven percent or maybe. I mean, it, it, the mileage might vary because depending on silicon qu uh, quality and how your boost behavior will be. Uh, the gains and, and losses will be, you know, different. Now, some people actually flat or even get better multi multi score they put when they when they lower the TDP. So, yeah, uh, I believe the standard one, uh, the stock, it runs at 142, 140, and 120. I believe this is these are the stock ones. I'm not telling you don't don't take this. Granted, I mean, I, I'm not, I haven't researched this, but I believe this was. I know for a fact this one is 100% correct. I know it runs at 142 watts. I'm not entirely sure about this one, these two, but I'm pretty sure it runs at that. It doesn't really matter because as far as I know, the um, the amps don't really, uh, it's not really a bottleneck. Um, so it's probably more about the ridiculous amount of voltage it actually shoves in. So, in the end, I would absolutely recommend the 5800 plus, uh, plus <laughs> 800, um, the 5800X, provided you actually put it down to the intended operational tdp of the cpu as you can see the water the, I'm, I'm i'm actually going to show you guys cinebench go this is an avx load so this is pretty much the highest load you can get and as you can see here the wattage is just uh, the the temperatures mwah, it's magnificent well this is not even hot this is like fuck you this is nothing screw you I run this half an hour, uh, uh, half an hour at high ambient uh, ambient temperatures, which I had that day, uh, it at seventy fucking eight uh, degrees. That's nothing. That's absolutely nothing for an uh, for an AVX load. So honestly, it runs as cool as my fifty six hundred X, fifty six the thirty six hundred X, which uh, the fifty eight hundred X actually replaced. So there's that. So I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys will be a little more critical about uh, some reviewers and do your own research. Do it so that the tech industry can finally stop being lazy and reviewers like, you know, those just don't know what the fuck they're talking about at least have the audacity to just, you know, um, you know, uh, what's it called? To, uh, to at least make a disclaimer and not just flat out lie and... and act as an expert now obviously a couple i have to mention this beforehand as well you will see that uh, this score 5000 uh, 5422 cinebench scores obviously it's it can get higher at these same settings the reason it scores this low is because i'm recording i'm using the cpu right now for other things obviously and uh, cinebench actually running below normal uh, priority so there's that i could run this at uh, uh, above normal or high or just normal and don't do anything It'll then have my 6, 000, uh, 5,800 something points. So don't worry about that. Just an example for showing how hot it actually gets, or rather, how not hot it's getting. Hope you learned something, and do the next.